Kiss yours if you kiss mine. All right, we're freaking at the Freakers Ball here live on RealLibertyMedia.com on this Friday, June 12, 2020. Yeah, it's Friday once again. We made it through another week. How the hell y'all doing out there in the various places you are at listening in on the Freakers Ball? Or if you're over there, you know, later on in the future dates listening into a podcast, howdy. How y'all doing? Appreciate you uh, listening at any time going on. So anyway, welcome to everybody here on RealLibertyMedia.com here in the chat room. Uh, those of you listening in on RLMRadio.xyz on the audio stream, hey, hey, <laughs> the RealLiberty.org, uh, wherever else you might be tuned in from, I don't know. Uh, we're, we're out there in various places. Tune in. Uh, dot com and uh, whatever. whatever. Howdy to everybody. Everybody. Everybody out there. Uh, but come on over here and jump on into the chat on RealLibertyMedia.com or RLMRadio.xyz. Uh, and uh, you can get there. Yeah, so we're on Freenode. Um, uh, pound, pound, Real Liberty Media. And uh, you can be here in the chat with all the rest of the folks that are in here. we got a, we got a decent group here. Uh, Moose Girl, mm, I don't know if she's going to be wrong later or not. She may be along later, but uh, what I have to say is uh, she is attending a music festival virtually. Yes, she's attending a virtual music festival. It's the Blue Ox Festival, and at this exact point in time, there's a band called Pertmere Sandstone playing there, and uh, she is in, engaged with that live streaming stuff going on in the chat that's over there on that. Because, you know, she's a bluegrass gal, and that's bluegrass stuff. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, welcome to everybody here in the chat, though. Uh, yeah, we got we got some folks here. We got Vinny. We got Cowboy Tech. We got uh, Miss Chloe. Uh, we had Miss Dan Van Meter. Donna, how you doing? Uh, I, I, I saw I saw, I saw saw uh, Ro, Romes and, and Rob Works, and I think Kate's out there somewhere. Hey, Kate. How's the kitties? How's them little pooches? Uh, Moose Girl is there, too, although she's not actually here. Uh, there's Kate up there talking. I'm scrolling up and looking. Sock puppet in the free enslaved. Oh, he bounced. Oh, I'm right, right, free. All right. Um, <laughs> Mr. Meister Brown, the Beetle. Uh, all kinds of folks. We got, we got like 30, 40 folks in here. Close to 40 folks in here chatting right now. Well, they're not all chatting all at the same time. That would be confusing if they were. But uh, they're here in the chat, so uh, yeah, yeah. Rob Works is uh, firing up the mighty bubbler, the mighty bubbler with the stanky water and uh, passing it around. But I, I don't mind a little stanky water; I'll take a hit. <laughs> yeah, baby. All right. Um, <laughs> so hopefully, y'all had a decent week out there. Uh, uh, my week was okay, I guess. Yeah, nothing too uh, exciting going on. Uh, you know, in, in lockdown world, uh, keeping an eye on the various news stories that are happening out there and seeing what's going on with those. Uh, on a personal note, uh, the the uh, governor, not a personal, but on a local note, I should say, uh, the governor of New Mexico uh, declared that uh, not only are face masks uh, to be worn uh, mandatorily, uh, but she said, uh, they, they'll come and get you now. They'll come and get ya. Oh, you should be afraid. They're going to come after you if you're not wearing one of them stupid-ass pieces of cloth over your face. However, <laughs> let me just say, <laughs> yesterday I was at the grocery store, the local grocery store here in town, and uh, there was a good, you know, decent, decent crowd in there, and uh, almost nobody, almost nobody had a face mask on. I saw two people with a face mask on. Uh, and, and so, uh, uh, you know, there was probably 30, 40 people in there at, in the grocery store, which for here is, is a pretty good crowd. You know, it's a tiny town, so, uh, but it was middle of the afternoon and such. And yeah, people don't care. They don't care. I don't care, uh, about the stupid face mask thing. However, I was at the uh, post office today and, uh, um, there were a couple people in there with, with, with the masks on. And giving you the giving you the stank eye, the Karen eye, they're giving you the Karen eye. Why are you not wearing a mask? <laughs> However, yesterday I was at the same post office, and there was uh, nobody nobody had a mask on except for the uh, 
the women working up there at the counter, you know. Uh, so, and and they were wearing them uh, haphazardly, should I say, uh, on their chins or at least below their noses. Um, you know, they got to work all day in that stuff. I, I don't think they're really appreciating it all that much, having to have that stuff going on on their faces. And uh, so the hell, with, the hell with the governor, really. Uh, I mean, who the hell does she think she is anyway? She's got no right issuing mandatory stay-at-homes and mandatory. You wear a mask if you ever go out. And you should only go out if it's an emergency or you absolutely need to get some supplies. Uh, she she don't know she don't know about nothing about rural New Mexico. All she knows about is the cities, and uh, and she thinks every place is like the city, and it's not. You know she she's up there in Santa Fe, and uh, and 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 it's a big town, and and so she thinks every place is like a big town here in the state, and it absolutely is not. <laughs> What? What? Yeah, <laughs> Rob says, yeah, I don't need no freaking mask. I, I go to the rest. Yeah, but besides, uh, you know, let's say you wear a mask into the restaurant. And you sit down and they bring you your food. Well, you, you can't eat with a mask on. What's the point? Um, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hmm. All right. Anything else interesting? Anything RLM related uh, going on? New and interesting. Solvenir! Solvenir! Showed up here in the chat yesterday. Uh, first time in many years. Well, several years anyway. Um, I've been seeing him over there on, on the Twitter. Uh, yeah, he followed me on the Twitter for all this time. And, and so he's been off doing whatever. I don't know how many of y'all remember Solvenir, but he's a good guy. He's, he's a cool guy. He's from over there in Europe. Uh, Germany or Austria... Somewhere in that range of zone. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> yeah, don't wear one. What the hell? Yeah, what's the what's the, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't have one. Well, so too bad. So sad. Uh, I don't. I don't. That I, that that one Corona one I wore that one day to take the picture and walk to the post office. Uh, that that was the only time. So. <laughs> oh man alright <sighs> but stuff is coming stuff at Walters and Holland thank you Hansel appreciate that I, I knew it was over there in one of them Germanic countries I just didn't know which one uh, so I wonder if he walks around with them wooden shoes on <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah, yeah, yeah Walter's great solving here uh, yeah he's he's awesome I used to you know he used to come on and do his shows and stuff it was great so uh, maybe he'll come back and do some more in time you know we'll, we'll find out he's, he's he's just getting back into it he's still I guess he's got a little illness going on right now I know you're Moose I, I, don't, I do not expect you to stop Blue oxing until blue oxing closes up shop for the night. So if you decide to come on after that, that's all up to you. And uh, yeah, most most girls just let me know in the chat there. She's listening to Pertinier Sandstone uh, there on uh, that as well. And listen to me, cool. <laughs> Dude, she's she's got two ears, and so she can listen to two things at once. Yeah. Do 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 do. What? Uh. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and kick off some music here. Now I know uh, you you all may know that there is some serious tyranny going on right now, but there's a lot more coming down the coming down the pike. I would say uh, I, I think that's the best way to phrase that. Coming down the pike is uh, we will be having some further tyranny going on. And I know I've been saying this for a long time, and everybody just laughed at me. Oh, they all laughed at me like Carrie, you know. They're all going to laugh at you. But no, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not going to go out and burn down the school. <laughs> not going to happen. Um, yeah, I, I don't believe in that kind of stuff. Uh, that That's not me. That's not my property. I got no right to burn it down. If it was my school, my own personal property, I, I don't have no problem burning it down. Of course, I never would have built it in the first place. But that's a whole other story. Anyway... 
you hear people say it, you know, or you did in the past. I don't know what they're saying at this point. I don't, I don't stay too tuned in to, to people's mindsets and conversations about such things. But uh, you used to hear people, you know, talk as we would talk about the upcoming tyranny, and we, we, we could smell it, we could see it, we could feel it coming this way. And we never knew what the trigger was going to be, what the, what the purpose was going to be. And now we got one trigger stacked on top of another trigger. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll get to more of that in a bit, but uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, it can't happen here, you say? Oh, yeah, that's some nice stuff right there. Let me tell you, that is a Walter Trout's brand new one. It just premiered today, about 12 hours ago. It's called Wanna Dance. So, yeah, Walter's out there pumping out the good new tunes. Awesome. Uh, before that, we had Leo Maraccioli covering Robert Palmer's Addicted to Love and uh, doing it in a retro style there. Uh, good job there, Leo, man. Appreciate you. And we kicked it off with a rainbow in. Can't happen here. Ha! <laughs> yeah, you keep on, you keep, you keep on telling yourself it can't happen here. Yeah, yeah, you just keep on fooling yourself. Well, just look outside. It's happening. <laughs> it's definitely happening. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, Booth Girl. Hey. How are you doing? Doing good. Good, good. Good to hear. Good to hear. Yep. Mm. Hanging in there. Made it through another week. Going back to work Monday. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, it's a good thing. Yes. Yeah. It is a good yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh,. Uh, did the uh, Blue Ox wind, round, wind up for the day? Uh, just about. Oh, okay. They're okay. like on their last song right now. All right. Well, you got you got you got more pertinent here tomorrow, so. Yep. It must have started early or something. I wasn't here for a little bit, so I missed some of it, but that's yeah. all right. Okay. Okay. That's okay. So, did you, are, are you going to the fish fry? Is that is that a thing now? Yeah. Okay. So that so that's open. Yes, I went with a friend to a fish fry at a new place called, well, it's it's been there for a while, but it was under a different name before, but called Heartbreakers, and no, none of the employees and none of the uh, customers were wearing masks. Great. That's great. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, it, it's like, come on, people. You, you get, everyone's being all paranoid. Everyone bought or a lot of people bought into this whole thing, hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. They just believed what the government said, and it's like, you guys, it, all common sense went out the fucking window, seriously, with this yeah. whole thing. Yeah. For a lot of people. Not for everybody. Uh, just a lot of people. <laughs> right. I think, I think it was an experiment, like I said, to see who would comply and who wouldn't sure or how many would and how many wouldn't i guess right 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 um i don't know you know who knows with them yeah well i, but, I did yeah, notice though at the uh grocery store there's still plenty of empty shelves there um mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of missing items on the grocery store uh but uh some things i like uh they, they send out a, like a weekly deal that goes into my P.O. box, uh, you know, showing their specials and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yep. And I, I got um, four four pounds, four pounds mm -hmm. of uh, of uh, hamburger, pre-made pre -made hamburger buns, or not hamburger buns, hamburgers. For, Patties, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was like three, two fifty, three, two fifty a pound, two fifty a pound. It was $10. Wow. Yeah, $10 for, for four pounds of those. Um so that I mean, so that that's certainly a lot less than eight bucks a pound that they were charging last time I was there. Oh, uh, hell yeah! <laughs> and they had some other uh, some other bargains on on certain meats. Uh, so yeah, um, so some of that I guess is is they're working that out. Um, uh, but but still, there's a lot of the uh, 
a variety of different things that weren't weren't in stock. But uh, again, nobody there with, with masks on either. Well, it was the exception of a couple people, but uh, yeah, uh, the, the 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 clerks they're not they're not wearing masks. Uh, most of the customers and couple couple freaked out paranoid people that that give you that give you that 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 stink eye. Oh, you don't yeah. have a mask on. Yeah, yeah. Shut up, Karen. Um, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so so I, I think it's uh, you know even though even though the idiot governor keeps on saying yeah it's mandatory shit nobody cares nobody cares. Right. Well, I was talking to someone today earlier and about the uh, mask thing. Yeah. And the whole the whole thing. Right. And it's just it, it, Okay, so in Wisconsin for instance, the Supreme Court shot down the stay at home order by the governor, right? Right. Well, then they try. Then the county started doing it, but how do they have authority if the governor doesn't? Uh, so they don't, don't have they authority don't, to don't. be issuing these orders. Right. They, they do not, they, and they, it's ridiculous. And people don't see that. People, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, up. I read uh, an article. I don't think I saved it, but up in Oregon. Uh, today or yesterday it must have been, um, mm-hmm. but I think I just saw it today. Whatever. Um, the, up, up in governor, the uh, up in Oregon, the governor there, I can almost talk, um, <laughs> uh, had issued this stay-at-home order crap, uh, and apparently she was only supposed to be able to do it for 28 days or whatever. Yeah. And somebody took her to court, or several people took her to court, and then there was a circuit court guy there, and he said, "All right, you're right." She can't do this. She doesn't have the authority to do this. And then, right. and, and then yesterday, the uh, Oregon Supreme Court uh, came out and said, "No, no, she. There's no limit. There's no limit. So, so she could keep you locked in your homes for the rest of your lives. Pretty much is what they're saying. Uh, which bullshit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so uh, that that's what uh, you know. The different different uh, states are doing. You know, it depends on the. Uh, Leanings, I suppose, of the uh, uh, of the, the various gubernaments, gubernaments in those uh, various states or cities or counties or whatever. Well, in the, in Eau Claire County, it's the freaking director of the the county, the Health and Human Services Department or whatever. Right. I mean, lady, you're over. You don't realize that you're fucking doing wrong here. You know, and they're using they use fear to get us to do a lot of shit, oh, right? Oh, well, sure, in mass. sure, sure, absolutely. And that's exactly what this is. This was a total fear mongering ca- campaign to the nth degree. Yeah, yeah. And they're still using it on us. It's like you guys you, ignore it. Seriously. It, like you said in New Mexico, Grim, you're not going to start wearing a mask now, are you? No. Yeah, I, you know, because <laughs> the governor said you should. Fuck that. Yeah, who the hell is she? I don't know her. I don't, I know nothing about her, and other than that she's she's basically a, a Nancy Pelosi clone. Um, well, there you go. And you know, a, a younger version of Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so, along the lines of this whole race thing. They want it to be about race, but it's not about race. It's about police brutality, and in this country, and I will speak only of this country, um, the government perpetuates the racism because it keeps people divided. Yeah. And we're easier to control that way. But it's not just based on your race. It's based on a lot of things. At, it can be. Okay? Sure, sure. Not just someone's race. It can be someone's gender. It can be someone's sexual preference. It can be someone's religion. Those are not race issues. But those are ways that the government keeps us divided as people. Right. So, you know, they the government wants to, this to be about race and black versus white. 
And that's oh, not what it is. To me, it's not what it is. No, okay? it's it's not what it is. It's not what it is at all. The whole it's a it's a big scam. It's another big scam on top of the other scam. Right. And it's just another. I mean, it, the white privilege thing. I never felt like I had white privilege growing up or anything. Maybe that's because I'm white and a girl, a woman. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe that's where I felt that. But so to me, just the term white privilege is racist in itself. Sure. You know, um, because. Oh, well, well, the, uh, you know, the, the, the phrase black lives matter is, is racist. It is. I mean, it because, is. Okay. I agree. I agree. Yeah, sure. Black lives matter. So do right. every, every, all the other ones. All the all the other lives still matter, and and apparently, if you say all lives matter, then then you're, that's that's then, wrong too. Then, oh my then, god! Then you're a racist. Oh, you said all then lives. Then you're using your white privilege, but <laughs> you know how dare you? Oh, you know, god. yeah. How dare you? I know, I know. But anyway, I don't want to sound too much like Greta here. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> totally kidding. Um, oh god. Yeah. So it. it Everyone just needs to fucking chill the fuck out, dude. Right, <laughs> I mean, come right. on. I mean, use your brain. <sighs> okay, let's let's talk a little bit okay. about about Chaz. Chaz, you know what Chaz okay. is? Okay, yeah, I uh, do. Okay, so um, because I, I think that whole thing is a it's a it's a, a Soros scam going on there. Oh yeah, I'm and, sure. Anyway, oh yeah. Uh, so uh, I got this article here from the conservativetreehouse.com. So obviously they have a slant. Uh, they're conservatives. Um, conservative treehouse, you know. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, they they say uh, Antifa activists take over six blo- six city blocks in Seattle, Washington, create lawless capital, uh, capital Hill Autonomous Zone, C-H-A-Z, Chaz, um, <laughs> which is okay. Yeah, they have, uh, or somebody has. Uh, they're not really autonomous, though. I, I saw a list of things they need today. And it's, yeah. like, it's like everything. They need, they need all, they need food, they need water. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, well, one of the things, one of the things that was on their list that they need is uh, those ties that they, you know, the cops use. Zip ties? Zip ties, yeah. Um, okay. And I'm like, what the hell do you need those for? Well, well, what are you, what are you, what's going on with that? What are you, what are you looking for zip ties? Uh, are you arresting people up there in your yeah. <laughs> lawless uh, Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone? Uh, yeah. Anyway, according to this here, it says, it's really quite stunning how the United States media have avoided reporting on a group of activists in Seattle, and they pretty much have. They're not talking about it. It should be the, the number one top story, right? Some some group of people takes over the center of a, of a downtown area in a major city. That that, that, sh- that should be nonstop on the air. There should be Janet Reno out there with her, with her uh, tanks and mortars and yeah, uh, I, I mean, just think about it. You know, yeah. uh, that's that's the way they react. That's the way the government reacts. But this, it's part of the, it's part of the scam. It's part of the deal. Um, yep. And they could do things. They could they could shut off the power and the water going into that that zone. But they, they haven't, could. and they won't uh, be, because it's part of the deal. It's part of the whole story. Yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> anyway, on this article here, it's really quite stunning. Okay. Da 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 da. Uh, that, they, that people have taken over part of a city surrounding the abandoned East Precinct Police Station. No one is being allowed inside what they call the free Capitol Hill uh, Zone. <laughs> Whatever. Autonomous Zone. Yeah, Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. Well, they got two, <laughs> they got two different names for it here: free Capitol okay. Hill, free Capitol Hill Zone, or Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. Okay. Whatever. Apparently, they call it both. Yeah. Uh, the activists have barricaded the streets and will not let any journalists or city officials inside the declared zone of control. It's a zone <laughs> zone of control. Now, um, as was as was pointed out here in the in the chat earlier, uh, Trump keeps oh. calling these people anarchists, and they are absolutely the opposite of anarchists. These uh, these people want to be rulers. Or at least that's what they're led to believe that they want to, 
uh, to become there. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, whether any of that's accurate or not, who knows? But um, so if you want to be a controller, you are ab- absolutely not an anarchist. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> since, since anarchy uh, literally means without no ruler. rulers, without right. rulers. Uh, so you can't be go in and say I'm the ruler here, and this is anarchy. What? Yeah, that no. doesn't work. Yeah, that no, does that not work. work. Uh, uh, yeah, that garden. I saw that, Donna. That they're putting a garden. Oh my god, it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> they brought dirt in or whatever. It's like early. You guys. Yeah, how long do you think you, you got to be there long enough to garden? All right. Uh, <laughs> the, region, oh my God. the region expands across six blocks as outlined by the occupying, occupying groups or occupiers. Um, uh, according to the area activists, East Precinct of the police station is called the Captured Regime. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> jur- journalist Julio Rosa tweeted photos from the zone, including flyers demanding the Seattle PB, PD be defunded and he declaring that police will always be racist because capitalism requires inequality. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> capitalism does not require anything other than free trade between two uh, agreeable parties. Voluntary trade. What you have in the United States is not capitalism, however. It's it's far from right. capitalism. Oh, it's far from it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what they're calling capitalism is, is pretty much like Trump calling these people anarchists. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're not anarch- anarch- anarchists, and you don't have capitalism in the United States, or pretty right. much any, or pretty much anywhere else in the world. Um, so independent journalist Andy Yu, NGO, and no news, whatever. <laughs> Uh, has has a great deal of familiarity with the groups assembled in the occupying effort. He describes the group in the control of the area as antifa or anti-fascist, which they're fascist anti-fascist. So <laughs> yeah, there, there's, there's some more oxymoron going on there for you. Yeah, no and, kidding. And cited tweets to suggest that uh, they were there were armed guards <laughs> guarding every entry among the. Occupy protesters, and you can't really line these people up with the Occupy movement, although uh, that's kind of what they're trying to kind of do. Um, anyway, I, I don't really need to go too much further into that. I, I have here the uh, the important uh, one that I came across mm-hmm. yesterday about this here, uh, and it's the de- the demands of the collective black voices at Free Capitol Hill to the government of Seattle, Washington. And it is a long list of demands. <laughs> and, and, and some of it is, well, you know, I'll just give you a little bit. Uh, I, I certainly won't give you the entire thing. That would take the rest of the show. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's get down to that here. So uh, given, given the historical moment, will begin with our demands pertaining to the justice system. Number one, the Seattle Police Department and attached court system are beyond reform. We do not request reform. We demand abolition. We demand that the Seattle Council and Mayor defund and abolish Seattle Police Department and attached criminal justice apparatus. This means 100% of funding, including existing pensions, for Seattle police at an equal level of priority. We also demand that the city disallow the operations of ICE in the city of Seattle. Now, I don't know what ICE really has to do with this whole thing. They're border agents. They're bo- That's border control. So yeah. I don't even know why ICE would be. They do in. more than that, though, Greg. I, I know they do, but it's just it's, it seems like... Okay, uh, well, if that's an equal priority level, then you're talking to the wrong people because, yeah. uh, uh, obviously, see, the city of Seattle uh, can can tell ICE not to come in there, but they're a federal agency, and they're going right. to come in there if they damn well please. Uh, so, they will. Yeah, so you, you better talk to somebody else on that. 
Uh, number two, the transitionary period between now and the dismantlement of the Seattle Police Department, we demand that the use of armed force be banned entirely. No guns, no batons, no riot shields, no chemical weapons, especially against those exercising their First Amendment rights as Americans to protest. So obviously, again, not anarchists, because they're saying, look, the First Amendment, which is a government thing, which means you're going back to the government to uh, get your rights, <laughs> which, which government, obviously, they don't grant rights. Oh, Can yeah. you do the Voss link? What's that again? The, the Voss link. What, who who wants that? Free. Oh, just go just go to rlmradio.xyz, man. Uh, yeah. Free, free and safe. rlmradio.xyz. Uh, that's that uh, that's where you want to go. Uh, it's it's a better place. And bookmark it this time, would you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this next one sounds okay to me. Um, mm -hmm. Number three. We demand an end to the school-to-prison pipeline and the abolition of youth jails. I'm on board with you there. Uh, get kids out of prison. Get cops yeah. out of schools. Uh, we also demand that the new youth prison being built in Seattle currently be repurposed. So I'm all fine on, on number three there uh, be, because okay. that, that, that's a good one. All right, number four, we demand that not the city government nor the state government, but the federal government, so they, they love the government still, uh, it's, as long as it's not the city or the state, and uh, so they're not anarchists, uh, launch a full-scale investigation into past and current cases of police brutality in Seattle and Washington, as well as the reopening of all cases that re reported to the Office of Police Accountability. In particular, we demand that cases p p particular to the Seattle and Washington be reopened where no justice has been served, namely the cases of, and they list a bunch of names there, um, uh, we demand reparations for victims of police brutality. Oh, God, don't, don't ask for that. You're never going to get that. Uh, and well, this is just for the, for the foes, folks that were brutalized by the police. Okay, all in, right. In a form to be determined, <laughs> so they don't know. Oh, okay. they, they don't really know what they want, but they want some no. reparations. <laughs> right. um, uh, we demand that the city of Seattle makes the names of the officers involved in police brutality a matter of public record. Absolutely, and yeah. anonymity should not should not even be a privilege in the public sector. You're right no. on. You're absolutely right on that. Yep. Um, Number seven, we demand a retrial of all people in color, just just the people in color, uh, in color it says, it doesn't say of color, it says in color, uh, currently serving a prison sentence for a violent crime by a jury of their peers in their community. Uh, it goes on, uh, that, that was number seven, and this goes mm -hmm. on, there's like 19 total demands there, and then they get, get on to some economic demands that must be addressed. Um, uh, they demand de-gentrification of Seattle, starting with rent control, which that's a government thing, rent control. Um, yep. uh, we, we demand restoration of city funding, but I thought you were trying to get rid of the government there in the city. Anyway, uh, we demand restoration of city funding for arts culture to reestablish the once rich local cultural identity of Seattle. We demand free college. Huh? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we demand free college for the people of the people of the state of Washington due to the overwhelming effect that education has on economic success. Uh, yeah, there, there, there's there's some confused stuff. Anyway, it yeah. goes on. There's there's a bunch of those, um, and then they have other stuff related to economic demands uh, that, that uh, pertaining to what they would formerly call health and human services. They demand hospitals and care facilities of Seattle employ black doctors and nurses specifically to care for black patients. Oh, God. They don't want white doctors caring for black patients. <laughs> Racist That's much? Ridiculous. Racist much? All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we demand the people of Seattle seek out and proudly support black-owned businesses. You mean the ones you burnt down? 
Oh, oh, uh, your money is our power. It's the same. Anyway, there's there's all kinds of crap in here. It's it's a it's a pretty long uh, piece, and uh, you can look through that. And uh, wow, um, <laughs> I, I mean, some of the stuff makes sense, like I said, uh, but some of it just goes straight to hell. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 a lot of confusion. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, I mean, you're demanding government to give you stuff while you're demanding that the government go away. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work right yeah, that way. Yeah, so, uh, you know, pick 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 a lane. Pick a lane. <laughs> wow. So that that's what's going on. And, and, again, why is this not the top news story on every channel, everywhere? Because they don't want it to be. They don't even want you to know about it. They're pissed no, off. No, they don't. They're pissed off that this is going on. Um, oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, okay, no. so I got this one. All right. This is from Wired.com. All right. 6 5 2020. Okay. Schools turn to surveillance tech to prevent COVID 19 spread. Yeah, that's what it's for. <laughs> yep. Okay. The administrators hope that tracking beacons will identify where students congregate and who should be isolated from someone who so someone contracts the virus. Should be who contracts the virus. Yeah. Again, a poorly written article. <laughs> anyway, um, when school, students return to school in New Albany, Ohio, in August, they'll be carefully watched as they wander through the red brick buildings and across well-kept lawns and not only by teachers. Yeah. They grow their much? Totally. The school district with five schools and 4,800 students plans to test a system that would require each student to wear an electronic beacon to track their location to within a few feet. Yeah. Uh, this is bullshit because they're saying the hope is that uh, it could prevent or minimize an outbreak of outbreak of COVID nineteen. Right. So yeah, but I'm saying bullshit. This is not. It's not because of the virus. Yeah. They want to track. They want you to wear this beacon thing now. Right. As if kids' with cell phones can't be tracked, but. Oh, but they want more specific, you know. Yeah, they want they want to be able to know where you are within a few feet. At all times. Yes, and they're going to test it on your kids that go to your public schools, sure. the public schools. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. So that's where we're at as far as the track. I mean, they want to do it to everybody, oh, not just kids that go to school. At, worldwide. Yeah, and... Yeah. You guys really got to, I would just take some time and really think about shit. Like, seriously, like, don't take your your information from CNN or Fox or any mainstream media outlet. Just, I don't know how else to tell you that other than that. I mean, I, I just really wish people would get their heads out of the sand. It would help a lot. You guys would be surprised. You guys are barking up the wrong tree. As usual. But the same old, same old, it has not worked. Yeah. Anybody that thinks this system is good and working, <laughs> I you need your head examined. I don't know what to tell you, but if it's good and working for you, awesome. But it sucks for the rest of us. It's good and working for them as they designed it, which... You're not part of that equation, other than the fact that how will you be controlled? Right, and yeah. how, what can they get out of you? Yeah, you got a leak for that one. Yeah, yep, I do. What the fuck? Where did it go? <laughs> Hang on, it's here. I just gotta go to it. Go to my history. Where is that? <sighs> uh, hang on, I'll get it. The system does work. Uh, free as as it was designed. It was and it's designed to control and oppress you, to keep you in line, to keep you in the cage. Um, yep. Yep. No dice. You must have a fucked up system or something. Right. Well, maybe maybe you just want to go to audio there, there, Matt. 
So uh, we'll give you we'll give you the. Uh, uh, all right. Okay. Um, yeah. There, there is the audio. Yeah. So you, you, you may think you're the master, <laughs> and you are the master of yourself, uh, which of course is always the case. But uh, you're not the master of the system. It's their system. You're just living, yeah. You're you're just living within it. All right. And, I, I want, I, oh, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. You you, you go ahead. I just I mean. It, People think the government gives a fuck about them. That's not why they're there. That's not what their purpose is. It's not to give a fuck about you. Nah, no, the government no. is a thing. A thing doesn't give a fuck about you. It's a creature. They, they a want monster. you to think that they give a fuck about you. Yeah. But they do not give a fuck about you. Not even a half a one. Not the Republicans and not the Democrats. None of them politicians. None of them people. Give a fuck about you. Right. So why do you go along with them? Why? Why? I, I, I just seriously wish people would just think for themselves for a fucking change. Yeah. Instead of fucking, well, this and that. and this. You're all wrapped up. You're barking up the wrong goddamn tree. Yeah. You're all fucking, they, that's what they want. They want you to be all wrapped up in their bullshit politics. Absolutely. When nothing ever gets better, it doesn't matter if it's a Republican or a Democrat in there. It, shit don't get better, okay? Right. They keep warring. They keep poisoning us. They keep doing uh, surveilling us. They keep killing us. And you guys are all good with it because you think, oh well, if if there's a Republican there, the Democrats are like, well, if we were if, if it was a Democrat, shit wouldn't be this bad, and vice versa. <laughs> Thanks. And you guys are nuts. They purposely do this to you. You guys need to realize there are two factions of the same team. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And guess what? You're not on the team. You are not. We are not on the team, okay? We are not. They have their team, and we're pieces of shit to them, okay? Right. And let me, so let me, let me stop just... thinking, stop trying to hope, or stop thinking even that the government gives a fuck about you. Right. Because they fucking do not. Yeah. Anyway, let me, let me read Free and Slave's comment here in the chat. He says... Okay. Uh, the Constitution, under law, holds the government in check using their powers. Well, that's a nice concept, a nice theory, but uh, everything they do is unconstitutional. Every uh, none, of, none of these lockdowns... They don't follow it. They don't follow the Constitution. No, 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 they have no, a nothing they do uh, is, is, is constitutional. And it's been that way since day one. The first day the Congress yep. and President went into off, and got into office back in 17, whatever. Yep. It was, it was, it was unconstitutional from day one. From day freaking one. And it's only gotten worse. Right. <laughs> no, they are not following it. So why why even say that? And they and they never have. Are you being sarcastic? Yeah, no. So I, anyway, anyway, I just wanted to bring this one up because uh, you had mentioned her previously, and we've talked about her. And um, uh, this is posted up on Fee, the uh, Foundation for Economic Education. Okay. Um, don't forget Brianna Taylor. Her death shows why no knock warrants need to mm -hmm. go. And there is yep. nothing, nothing in the Constitution that allows for no knock warrants. There's a right. thing, there's a thing in the, in there, in the Bill of Rights, the first ten amendments there, called, uh, the Fourth Amendment, which, right. absolutely no knock warrants are a total violation of. Yep. And Illegal person seizure, right? Yeah, and you're supposed to be yep. safe and secure uh, in your uh, home, in your person, place, and things. Yes. Uh, which <laughs> no knock warrants have no place in that. And it's like uh, the, the the United States Supreme Court, the big Supreme Court, said that Texas, the state of Texas, when they when people down there complained about the no refusal weekends, which they do uh, periodically, and they stop. All the drivers going up the road, and they say we're we're gonna turn. That's a, unconstitutional. We're, too. we're we're gonna draw blood from you, 
And people got up in arms about that and said, you can't do this. And they sued. And it went all the way up to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said, yeah, they're, they're cops. They can do whatever they feel like. Oh, imagine uh, that. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, okay. And apparently the Supreme Court somehow is, is, is more powerful than the executive or the legislative branches. Uh, somehow that's, that's the way it's turned out these days. Uh, it's gotten to that point where if the Supreme Court says it, then that's all that matters at this yep. point in time. It's total bullshit. Um, yep. and, and <laughs> so anyway, so this article here on C, uh, no knock raids are a violation of the sanctity of the home uh, and the individual's right to protect it. Uh, yep. Uh, amid the nationwide focus on the death of George Floyd, another tragedy has unfortunately fallen by the wayside. We should not forget the death of Breonna Taylor or the dire need to abolish the no-knock warrants that caused her death, trample right. property rights, and routinely endanger Americans. The sad story of her death. On March 13th, not that long ago, police oh. officers broke into the Louisville, Kentucky home of Taylor and her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, unannounced. Uh, home invasion. Uh, the, the police yep, were... Ex it, was, it was ridiculous. Yep, the police were executing a no-knock warrant, which allows them to conduct a search without identifying themselves as yep. law enforce enforcement as part of the drug crime investigation into a different suspect. Not Taylor, not Walker, who was already in police custody. The, the guy they were looking for was already in police custody. Yeah, they had already arrested him earlier somewhere else. Yep. And so, then they go to this house and kill Brianna Taylor, shooting her eight times. And then they release the report today, this week. No, no signs of injury they had on there. Right. She, she got shot eight times. Yep. Anyway, so when Walker, it, her, when what? Walker, when Walker, the boyfriend heard unknown intruders breaking into his home. He did not know they were police officers, so quite understandably, he grabbed his lawfully owned firearm and right. fired a shot at the unknown invaders. The ensuing hail of more than 20 police-fired bullets left Taylor, the woman, dead, and Walker was arrested for attempted murder of a police officer. The charge has since been dropped. Uh, police claim that they knocked at the apartment door and announced himself, yet that is hard to believe. They were specifically executing a no-knock warrant, after all, and not just Walker, but multiple neighbors Neighbors had confirmed uh, there heard no such announcement. So neither Taylor nor Walker had any criminal history, and no drugs were found in the raid on the apartment, as if that matters. Uh, you, you guys were doing a home invasion, an illegal home invasion. Uh, Taylor's killing was a grotesque act, uh, act of police recklessness. It once again exposes the injustice of no-knock warrants, which put both police officers and law-abiding Americans in grave and unnecessary danger by creating a situation where a routine law enforcement search can easily turn into a deadly misunderstanding. And sadly, Taylor's death is not unique. It is not. It's it, happened so many times. So many times. Listen to this. Listen to this number. Law enforcement officers conduct 20,000 no-knock raids every year. Did you hear that? 20,000. 20, <laughs> God. We Do don't you know. not believe it? We don't. Do you think it just happens to people that are criminals, quote-unquote? Yeah, they're, most of the time they're going to the wrong house. Because Brianna Taylor was no fucking criminal. She would work with a nurse or EMT or something. Yeah, EMT. She got a picture Doing of her. Doing good during the pandemic. She's got a, a picture over there with her uniform right. on and all that. Just in her ass. And she, she, she's just trying to relax because they're doing her job helping everybody else. Right. Come home to relax for a little while. She was in her freaking underwear. Okay? Right. Anyway. So um, in the bathroom, and they shot her eight times. So, okay. uh, apparently, so imagine that. Well, you think that's not going to happen to you? You think that's not going to happen to you? Yeah. I mean, because, they, again, because of the no-knock warrant, that can happen to anybody. Right. They, they could be going for okay. a neighbor You're and then bust into your house. Right. They could go for a neighbor. Oops, we got the wrong house, which happens a lot, too. Exactly. Okay? So you guys need to wrap your minds around this and stop thinking, well, that won't happen to me. 
Right. Because this is happening. 20,000 people. Okay? Yep. 20, 000, not even 20,000 people. 20,000 homes. I don't know how many people were in those homes. So over 20,000 people have been terrorized with these no-knock warrants every year. Right. All right. Okay, anyway. So, here, oh, here. What do you think is going to happen if, you know, someone's walking by and they smell some fucking weed? Right. In your, in your non-legal state. I'm okay. sure. I'm sure they didn't, well, Donna. They're not going to call the cops for that. Does see, Don, Don, Donna got 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 locked or caught up in one of these, and they busted right. into her house, and she was in the shower, and there was never yeah. any warrant. And there you go. Some of we even know. Just yeah, just busted her, busted her in. Anyway, so uh, here's the deal. Um, uh, congressional Democrats have introduced a police reform bill that would abolish no knock warrants. For federal drug cases, which does not go far enough, but at least it's a start. Meanwhile, Rand Paul, libertarian leaning, not even close, uh, Kentucky, no. Kentucky Republican, has led the charge against no knocks from the right. He was one of the first voices to speak out about Breonna Taylor's tragic death and has called for the reform in no uncertain terms. He Good. says, he said, I think, I think it's crazy uh, that we're breaking down people's doors in the middle of the night, the senator said in a conversation with Taylor's aunt. People are frightened. They don't know what to do. They don't know if it's burglars. I want to make sure that we don't forget, Brianna, Paul continued, that we try to make it better so this does not happen again. Like, <laughs> the, only, gonna... the, only way, the only way to do that is to consign no-knock warrants to the dustbin of history. So... Hooray for Rand Paul on that little thing, whether or not it means anything to anybody beyond him, who knows, but, uh, yeah. Oh, God. I know, I know. Okay, we're going to play some more music here. All right, let's do that. All right, good night, Vinny. Good night, Vin. Have sweet hillbilly dreams. <laughs> stay away from those sheep. I'm teasing you, Vinny. Ah, you know that. <laughs> stay away from. Stay away from those sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you crap, Vinny. I gotta do it. You know that. Okay. All right. This is what, what, what All I, right. <laughs> one, one of my favorite uh, artists, dead artists here, Jeff. Dead Healy. artists. Well, you know, there's so many of them, but right. uh, uh, Jeff Healy. Jeff Healy. All right. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Oh, Joey! Joe Bonamassa there, uh, doing a couple of instrumental tracks there, Black Winter and Django. Uh, back in uh, July of 2016, man, the boy can play. Uh, I gotta say, uh, before that, we had BPMD uh, doing covering uh, Grand Funk Railroad's We're an American Band and doing a hell of a job of it. And kicked it off there with Jeff Healy as the years go passing by. Just good stuff, man. I'll, I'll, I'll cross the board on that one, man. I got to tell you, that's, uh, that's some great music. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that yeah. the same as the Fuller Flare, then? The CME? Oh, yeah. It's, it's a chronal mass ejection. It, 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 is, a, uh, uh, it, it is a solar flare. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And so that can mess with you a little bit, right, sometimes? Oh, a lot. <laughs> well, it messes with not just you, but others, too. But yeah, like, yeah, definitely. Like, you, what happens, Grim? I, I just go all off like, balance, you... off balance and queasy, and uh, I, I just feel wrong. If, that, if, uh -huh. you, if you could understand that. Um, yeah, I, I've felt I, like I, that before. I just feel not right, unsettled. Yeah. Um, it's it's a it's a it's a it's bad stuff. Um, yeah. And, what, so and, what and, causes I, it? it? It just messes with my equilibrium. Um, yeah. It causes, and, it's, it's large explosions of plasma and magnetic field into the sun's corona. Yep. Corona. It, yeah. Interesting term of uh, choice of words, right? Well, it, it is, but. Um, Corona means crown, though. Yes, that's what it means. That's the actual... Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, whatever. But anyway... That's right. There Free. is... The... <laughs> ma, 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 Corona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ma, 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 ma. Yeah. Um, so it was... For, these were... Um, 
So imminent CME arrival is first observed by the Deep Space Climate Observatory satellite located at L1 orbital area. Yeah. Sudden increase in density, total interplanetary magnetic field strength, and solar wind speed at the Discover spacecraft indicate arrival of the CMA-associated interplanetary shock ahead of the magnetic cloud. Okay, this is all deep for me. I don't, you know, I have to read this slowly to, like, understand their big words. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, um, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, also, we were discussing Directed Energy Weapons, or DEW, and I believe governments around the world use this this uh, technology. They certainly and do. I, I believe they start wildfires and do other nasty stuff with these. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, they have these tools, and they are using them. No doubt about it. Yep. And, and the CME, I mean, that's kind of a natural phenomenon, right? Grim. It's not kind of, it is. <laughs> yeah, a space, that's natural, okay, but yeah. a DEW no, that, that's is all, not natural. <laughs> no, 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 that's all man-made. And they, they have various ones. They got handheld, they got vehicle-mounted, they got ship-mounted, plane-mounted, they got them yep. up in space. Uh, and DEW stands for Directed Energy Weapon, in case you were wondering. Yes, it do. And I posted a link in the chat to yep. that. New World War. So, yeah, this is good to know and good to keep up with what they um, are up to. Oh, yeah. And what, they, what tools up. they have in their, up their sleeve. So, and they are using this stuff. Sure. And I think what happened in Minneapolis is they had one there. Uh, they had a um, the L, what's the sound one? The LRAP. Yeah, I think that's the one. Long dis long range acoustic something weapon. Yeah, and um, they turned it on, but I think they realized, oh wait, we're gonna make the cops go deaf too. <laughs> If we use this thing, we're gonna make ourselves go deaf. Well, we no, it's it, it, it's directional, so. Okay, it's directional. Okay, yeah, so but they, still, they, you you hear it. Well, yeah, you but can they, still hear it. Well, they they you have know. they have protection. They have protections. True, they they do For probably those, all wear earplugs. Yeah, or headsets, you know. Uh, right. Oh, they, yeah, they usually have the noise canceling headsets. Right. So. Yeah, they usually have the ha sound canceling. Right. Uh, head headphones or headset or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So they are protected, but so I, that okay. So maybe that wasn't the reason, but all of a sudden they start this thing, and you're just like, "What the hell is that?" Yeah. Yeah. It's loud. It's loud, and it will make you go deaf. It will make, and it just doesn't fuck with your ears. It just fucks with a lot of things. Oh yeah, all that vibration coming through your body. That shit. Yeah. That that that. that yeah. Definitely. It it don't mess you up. Okay. It, it, it messes with your internal systems. They messes, think that it's, with your they brain. tell you it's just a... Oh, go ahead, Graham. Messes with your brain, messes with your, like, your heart yep. rate, your heart pace, whatever. Yep. Um, uh, it can mess up your eyes. It, it does a number yep. of things that, to, to just take you out of uh, out of contention so they can, you know, come and do bad things to you. Right. And, you know, they, they talk about, you know, people, I think we've been, well, I know most people have been tricked uh, with the the... The military and the the pigs' um, vocabulary, because sure. all of a sudden they introduce these non-lethal weapons. That you kill know you. what? That's non bullshit. Non-lethal weapons that kill you. <laughs> they do not exist. Non-lethal weapons. Yeah, they say. Well, they're rubber bullets. Do you guys know what a rubber bullet is? It's a, it's it, a real bullet wrapped in rubber. Right. Coated in rubber. It is not like a hockey puck rubber. It's a real bullet coated in rubber. Well, sure, I mean, right? you gotta launch and it. And even if it was right? a hockey puck rubber type bullet, guess what? That could kill you too. Okay, free and if they, made, if they made bullets out of hockey puck, the, the material they make hockey pucks out of? Yeah. Those would definitely kill you. Oh, that's hard ass rubber, yeah. It is. Yeah. And so don't let them fool you into thinking, well, they're using a, ta they use a taser on that guy. Guess what? When they use the taser, 
they tase you like 50 times, and that makes your heart stop. Sit and down. then they, you die. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. If you're resisting that much, they, they'll, they will. They'll tase you 50 times. Oh, and guess yeah. what? You'll be dead. Right. Because they can up the, the, they can increase the intensity of the taser. Sure. Don't be, th you guys, we need to, you need to educate yourself about, when, when the cops say something, the military, well, we use non-lethal techniques. Right. It's bull crap. That's a lie. All their techniques are lethal. Every single one that they use, including the chokehold maneuver, using your knee. Or just their arm. They can do it with their arm. Uh, right. They killed that guy in New York. What was his name? Uh, that was selling the cigarettes. Oh, Garner. Garner, yeah. Eric uh, Garner. Yeah, yeah. He, he, they, he used the guy. That, that cop used his arm. Yeah, and he, he, him. he also said, "I can't breathe," and they yeah, fucking kept I, choking him out. Now I, I watched. I watched the thing by uh, Dave Chappelle today. It was a half hour. Oh God, I have to watch. I have it queued up here, Graham. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet. Oh, he, doing he, the blue he, lock, you know. he nails it. He nails it across the board. Oh yeah, I have to watch that. Yeah, I, I Chappelle's a I sharp dude. To. He's you know, he's a, he's a smart guy. He is smart. Yeah, Most yeah. comedians like him are very intelligent people. Yeah. So just like George Carlin, just like Bill Hicks, just like all of them. Now, now a lot, a lot of the quote unquote conservatives were really upset because he went after Candace. What's her name? Owens. Candace I Owens. Think. Because because she came out what a what a total state of she, she is. is oh god I, I have not seen anything I have I have just paid no attention to her whatsoever what a horrible person anyway um <laughs> so so yeah if you could get a chance to check out that Chappelle piece uh, I'm going it, to yeah it's, 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 it's worth it's worth thirty minutes of your time here let me get the link here I think I have it up I can All right. yeah, the ahead. link quick for the Dave Chappelle. Yeah, but put that, put that we, in there. I mean, you guys can watch it right now, but we're still on. But, you know, at least yeah, you'll have I'll, it here. I'll, I'll, I'll put it into the post-show blog. Okay, yeah, because I had it already queued up. It's paused. I started watching just a little bit before he got into the routine, and then I had to pause it. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, I've always been a fan of Dave Chappelle. Oh, yeah. Big he, time. Oh, yeah. He, you, you remember he, that, that, uh, that one who yeah. was a, a black guy? He used to be in a cop, and, and he was up there in L.A.? Um, and, uh, what the hell is that guy's name too? Uh, and, and then he got fired for some kind of stupid crap and, and yeah. he, he tried to go back. Chappelle knew that guy. He was, he was oh, a buddy. Okay. Uh, at least that's what he says in, in, in this piece here anyway. Oh, okay. Uh, in the, okay. In the, the title of that video, 846, that's the amount, okay. that's the amount of time that that cop was, had his, his knee on, on, uh, on the neck of that that dude, Eric Garner. No, 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 no. Oh, uh, oh. This is George Floyd. Uh, that's oh, oh. Eight, eight minutes and forty six seconds. And right, talk, right, yes. He, yeah. he talks about that with a cop sitting there with his hand yep. in his pocket the whole time, and the other yep. idiot, idiot cops just sitting there. It was, it was good. It was a good uh, thing. Yep. So, um, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean. Um, and you're not going to laugh much during during that video. They're, no, you're not. You're not it's not the stand-up routine. You know, he talks from to my him. understanding. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and he calls out you know some of his other comedian friends. So not exactly, but he says uh -huh. they, they should be up here doing the same thing I'm doing. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah. So a well, anyway, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I I've grown up. I I told a story to a friend of mine, and I I thought about this today again. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, I went. I grew up in Minneapolis, right? Where the, this is like ground zero for all this recent race, this recent police brutality shit. I'm not going to even call it race shit because that's not what it is. Okay. It's about police brutality. Absolutely. And the militarized police state. Right. That's what it's about. The government wants us to think it's about racism. Sure. But it isn't. They don't want you and going I, after them. They want you going after each other. Right. And as I pointed out last week and many prior weeks. In many years now, that Grim and I could, for 11 years, that police brutality could have been our only topic every time. Oh, yeah, every week. All, I mean, there's, the there's whole freakers. Story, yeah. Tons of stories every single week about this. Right. Yep. So think about that. That's right. Fuck the police. All right. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> them. Okay. 
Go ahead. Okay. Um, okay, I have a couple of interesting... Maybe not interesting. I have a couple stories. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess they're interesting, uh, but not surprising. Interesting, but not mm -hmm. surprising. Um, okay, first one here is on TruePundit.com. Exclusive. Bill Gates negotiated $100 billion contact tracing deal, <laughs> deal with the, the, a Democratic congressman sponsor of the bill six months before coronavirus pandemic. Oh, okay. Contact tracing. It didn't just pop up suddenly. No, because, it did not. No, no. So here it is. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation helped negotiate who would score a $100 billion government-backed contract, meaning you're paying for it. Well, technically, uh, <laughs> you're not really paying for it, but whatever. Uh, you, whatever you pay, it goes to nothing. But $100 billion government-backed contract tracing uh, con contract in August 2019. Last August. Six yes, months, hello! Six months before the pandemic arrived in the U.S. and four months before it swept through China. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> the, the, shock, the shocking revelations were unveiled. Yes, that's not shocking. Uh, that, that's what that's I'm saying. That, that's what I'm saying. Interesting, oh but not, not surprising. Right. Uh, so the, the shocking revelations were unveiled on the Thomas Paine podcast and the More Paine show on Patreon uh, by, by the two investigators who blew the whistle on the massive Clinton Foundation tax fraud during the congressional hearing in 2018. John Moynihan and Larry Doyle testified in Congress detailing the fraud and schemes, amazing they're still alive, uh, utilized, by yeah. the, utilized by the Clintons to avoid paying $2.5 billion in federal taxes. Uh, the investigative duo, in their first interview, since that bombshell congressional testimony, revealed that to Payne that representatives from the Gates Foundation met with the U.S. Congressman Bobby L. Rush, who sat down in Rwanda, East Africa, I wonder why they're doing it over there, uh, in, <laughs> in mid-August 2019 to hash out who would score the windfall from a government contract tracing program. And just last month, nine months after the meeting uh, with the Gates Foundation in Rwanda, Rush, a Democrat from Illinois, introduced the bill, the $100 billion H.R., Six 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 six. <laughs> I'm not shitting you on that. Uh, uh, the the COVID nineteen testing, uh, reaching and contracting, uh, contacting everyone. Trace Act. Uh, uh, Russia's bill would establish a program run by the CDC for national coronavirus testing and contact tracing. Payne has since learned that Congressman Rush traveled to Rwanda with his spouse from August 12th through August 19th of last year to take part in talks and a week-long event underwritten by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Rockefeller Brothers Fund. Oh, God, why do we got to keep hearing these names time and time again? What are people going to figure it out? It's the same players, same all the time, every single fucking time. Yeah, absolutely. What does it take? What yeah. is it going to take, you guys? I think people are waking up to Bill Gates and realizing what a piece of shit he is. But my God, the <laughs> Rockefellers, come on. You guys need to wake the fuck up. They're still around and they still have huge power. Right. It's not Trump. You guys you guys are barking up the wrong goddamn tree. Well, it's Trump. Before it was Trump, guess who it was? It was Obama. And before it was Obama, guess who it was? It was George Bush. And before him, guess who it was? Do you guys see? It does not matter. It doesn't matter. It's, it goes the, the by who is funding these motherfuckers, <laughs> and they put in there who they want in there to dupe you further, to make you think, oh, this guy's going to be better. This guy's going to be better. Yeah, like, you guys are fucking stupid. You're being, you're not thinking. The, the people in office, uh, the people you vote for are meaningless. Yeah, meaningless. I, you know me. Meaningless. I know. I know. And that's, that's a good rant. Okay. So here's, a, no, here's another one. What happened? What? What? Hello? Oh, no. Hello? What happened? Nothing happened. I'm here. Ah. Are you here? I'm here. I lost you. Well, you just, you muted me. Check your mute button. Oh, my God. Check your mute 
button loose girl. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I know Moose is still alive, but she could have muted the, the headset part. Okay. She's okay still, can you hear me now? I, okay. I, I, I always heard you. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> sorry about that little rant. I mean, about the, uh, the cussing and like, like, what's going like? Ah, sorry. Don't worry, <laughs> sorry don't, about that. Don't worry about it. Okay. And second, se- second story that is interesting, but again, okay. <laughs> not surprising. And this is something that I personally have been harping on for a long time and not necessarily about this Corona nonsense, but mm-hmm. about something. Knew it was coming one way or another. Uh, because th- this has been their drive for a long time. They've wanted to do this. So here it is yes. on, on LouRockwell.com. But now they've got the perfect trigger mechanism to do that with the corona bullshit. <laughs> right. Warning. The corona panic as an opportunity to reset capitalism. That's what reset they want. Reset it. Reset it. Remove it. <laughs> D- destroy it. Didn't you say that we don't have that here, though? Well, we right? don't. We don't. But what they call capitalism. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. The government-controlled cronyism, or what? Okay. Okay. Well, you put whatever name you want on it. Yeah. But, right. Uh, any any kind of uh, free economic anything. So it says there's a shocking essay on the front page of the World Economic Forum website. The World Economic Forum hosts an annual meeting at the end of January in Davos, Switzerland. You all have heard of Davos, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's their, one of their favorite places to meet. Yep. Located in the Eastern Alps, the meeting brings together some 3,000 business leaders, international political leaders, economists, celebrities, and journalists for up to five days to discuss global issues across 500 public and private sessions. It's the annual Woodstock for the crony elite. It is. Yep. Uh, the founder and executive chairman of the forum is Klaus Schwab, and you may have heard his name Keep before. Shit now, Schwab. Schwab. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the above mentioned essay, which is titled "Now is the Time for the Great Reset," was yeah. written written by Schwab. It's uh, it is a stunning call to take advantage of the Corona panic to move away on a global basis from free market capitalism toward a yep. planned society designed by the elitists. A little bit from the essay here. We won't give you the whole thing. But uh, corona lockdowns may gradually may be gradually easing, but anxiety about the world's social and economic prospects is only intensifying. There is good reason to worry. A sharp economic downturn has already begun, and we could be facing the worst depression since the 1930s. Oh, worse than that, buddy. Oh, it's worse. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> way worse. Oh, my God. But while this... It's, out- it's a chasm. It's not even a depression. It's a huge chasm of, like, <laughs> Yeah. Like, it's imagine a- an earthquake went through the middle of the country, like, you know, and just, like, <sighs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a huge huge chasm. He goes on to say, but while this outcome is likely, it is not unavoidable. To achieve a better outcome, the world must act jointly and swiftly, global new world order, uh jointly and swiftly to revamp all aspects of societies and economies, from education to social contracts and working conditions. Every country from the US to China must must participate in every industry from oil and gas to tech must be transformed. Oh God. In short, we need a great reset of capitalism. The Great Reset Agenda would have three main components. The first would steer the market towards fairer outcomes. Uh, to this end, government should improve coordination, for example, in tax, regulatory, and fiscal policy, upgrade trade arrangements, and create the conditions for a stakeholder economy at the time of diminishing tax bases and soaring public debt. Governments have a powerful incentive uh, to pursue such actions. You think? Uh, uh, yeah, thank. <laughs> 
Moreover, moreover, gov governments should implement long overdue reforms that promote more equitable outcomes. Depending on the country, these may include changes to wealth taxes, the withdrawal of fossil fuel subsidies, which they should have never had fossil fuel subsidies in the first place, and new rules governing intellectual property. That means they want to get you if you're using something that somebody I, made. I know. Oh, yeah. They want to get you a hook, line, and sinker. They want to get you up the ass. Right. Anyway, it goes on. It talks about uh, how the Great Reset agenda would do other sayings here. And this is only a clip out of the entire deal. Um Anyway, the guy that wrote this, uh, what's his name, uh, Robert Wenzel, the guy that wrote this ends with this here. He says, consider this post a warning. The power players are going to use the current panic to attempt to push through their agendas of control yep. that will benefit them personally, but damage the greater economy. We, yep. you and I, everybody, all of us, are part of that greater economy. And this isn't the first time they've done this. Absolutely not. But this, this is this, not the first time this has happened. This, this is their best opportunity. Uh, it is. That's is why they create these stupid things. Their best opportunity uh, to get this done. Yes, that's why they created it. That's why they caused all this global shutdown and all this crap. Yeah. 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 It, 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 it's easy to see the writing in the wall when you start scratch, pulling off the layers a little bit, yep. scratching the surface, and just doing a little bit of research. If you, but you know what? People that are brainwashed and believe what they believe, they don't want to say, oh, I'm wrong. They they want to be right so badly. Well, yeah, who doesn't want to be right? But if you're not right, right you're not. If, if, if you're wrong, then... I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know where to I'm keep going trying, with that, to but keep, it's just it, to, to keep on trying to prove you're right when all the evidence points that you're wrong is right. insanity. That's craziness. That's that's lunacy. It is, and <laughs> I I don't know how else to you know. I try to word it like better, but um. I don't know what else to tell people other than that. I wish people could just get over what's been programmed and pushed onto them, and just not and not and just forget everything that they've been told and everything they believe as far as their politics and the government. Because you need to see it for what it is. Because you guys are you're you're playing their game. Absolutely. You're 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 going right along with what they want and. I mean, I watched this documentary, and I I was well aware of this practice and that, that this happened in this country for a long time because I spent 10 years living and working on an Indian reservation, okay, in yeah. northern Wisconsin. Sure. And I met a lot of Native people, and they still are in pain, you guys, okay, as a people. Yeah. They're still in pain. Oh, hell yeah. Most of them are living in, in abject poverty. Yeah, because they have still a stigma on them that shouldn't be there. Right. And they also have grandparents that went to Indian school. Okay? They're still alive. They're, yeah. they're, getting, they're old. They're elderly now because they stopped this practice in like... The 1950s sometime, I think. No, it was later than that. It was like the 1970s. Okay. This went on up till the 70s, okay? Yeah. This is what they would do, okay? The federal government would go to Indian reservations and knock on their door and take their kids out of the home and bring them thousands of miles away to what they called Indian schools, and there were several of them around the country. Right. And they would cut their hair, and they wouldn't allow them to speak the language that they knew, the native language. They basically wanted to not to take the Indian out of them. Okay? Yeah. So put yourself and back put yourself in that position. Put yourself in that position as a mother or a parent of these children. Right. They come in, they say, well, oh, we're taking these kids, they're going to Indian school. And you know what, guys? 
Do you think they were nice to these kids at Indian school? No. Do you think they were nice to them at all? They no. were not. No, brutal. They, they were brutal. Them, they told them they were dirty. They were worthless. They were this. They had to be... They had to get that Indian shit out of them, or they wouldn't be normal. They wouldn't be accepted as a human being. Yep. I mean, if you guys don't know the history of that story, I would highly suggest doing some research because... Absolutely. And guess what? The government never stopped really doing that. They don't take him to Indian school anymore, though. No. You know, they just put them in foster care. Yeah. Where those foster care people don't give a fuck about them. The foster care system is so corrupt and so bad. Oh, yeah. It's tied to the human trafficking and the child trafficking shit. Oh, it's a big time. It is. It's big time. Big time. Yeah. So you guys that think you know everything and you're all good and you're, you're fine with your beliefs and you know what you're all about. You guys have no clue, dude, what it's like to be walking someone else's shoes. You yeah. know, in you know, if you if you made it through to adulthood unscathed in your life, congrats. Yeah. You know, way to go. Yeah, yeah, good, good on you. But you know, this is the kill. It kills me because people talk shit without knowing history. You know, and that was a hard, that was, by the way, that documentary I watched was on PBS. It was on Indi- a, a show on PBS called Independent Lens. Yeah. Which is done by just normal people, like, you know, just okay. regular people, not normal. I hate using that word normal, but regular people. <laughs> Average folk. Yeah. Independent Lens. They call it that for a reason. It's independent journalists putting this information out there. And you're you're going to get more truth from that. Than you are from CNN or Fox any fucking day. Right. Hey, if you're listening to CNN and Fox, I can't help you. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, just I mean, I can't either. I really, I All don't right. know what to tell you. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's posted this quote twice. Let's just share it. Free and slave. Put put in the okay. quote. One man with courage makes a majority. Thomas Jefferson. Yep. Thomas Jefferson was a smart man. He certainly was. They they didn't want they didn't go along with his ideals though. No 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 no, no, no they didn't they no, no. they had to fucking say no fuck you dude we're gonna do it this way. Yep 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 yep. That's basically what they did to Thomas Jefferson. All right we're gonna play some more music here. Okay let's do that. And uh, free no. and what? Uh, speaking of Thomas Jefferson though, I learned about Thomas Jefferson when a long time ago like when I was in grade school right. Yeah. And then I go to the Washington D.C. And I was like 13, I think, the first time I went to D.C. Yeah. And um, we went to all the touristy shit, you know what I mean? Sure, sure. But you read the Thomas Jefferson quotes, and then when I was 13, I didn't think much of it, you know. But now, when yeah. you go back and look up Thomas Jefferson quotes. He knew what would happen, he was, man. He knew he what would knew, happen. Yeah. He knew what was going on, you guys. He but knew, they didn't, you know. You know. He knew that no matter what protections he put in there. And in, in, in the, uh, well, yeah. at first after we wrote the Declaration of Independence, but then also in the Constitution. Um, and the, he, they took his Declaration of Independence, kind of messed it up a little bit, but he mostly, right. had, he mostly had it. Uh, so they, they, they didn't like what he, what, he, what he had to say because it limited them. It limited their... Yes, yeah, they wanted more power. And he was saying, well, no, wait a minute, wait. He was telling them, no, no, you know what I mean? He was it, saying, no, we yeah. can't do that. He knew where it was going to go. He knew where it was going to yeah, go. Yeah, he did. All right, we're going to play some more music here. Um, now, now this this first song, uh, Free Enslaved, it may make you feel better. Uh, you, you may like it. Uh, and it may, it may make you just fired up more. It all depends on how you look at it. And thanks, Cowboy Tech, for requesting it. This is Steppenwolf. Awesome. Thank you, Samantha Fish, uh, my babe. Uh, turn it up and miles to go. There's a double uh, track little thing there. 
Uh, up close at Cairns, that was uh, five years ago, May 30th, 2015. Oh, good stuff. Uh, anyway, before that, we had Judas Priest breaking the law for the Moose Girl, and we kicked it off there. For, it's a Cowboy Tech Request. Steppenwolf doing the Monster 2008. America, where are you now? <laughs> don't you care about your sons and daughters? America, don't you know we need you now? America left the building a long time ago. Yes, they did. <laughs> it did. Whatever it was. Oh, God. So, uh, anyway, yeah, Samantha, man. Ooh. <sighs> Ooh. She is hot. Hot, hot, hot. Hi. <laughs> not, not so, well, uh, do you have a story? No, no, not yet. All right, go ahead. Oh, okay. So I I have a little bit of a take on the whole police brutality thing, which they're trying to make a race thing, which is not a race thing. It's a police brutality thing. And it's called, okay, so we're talking about all this, people are throwing out these words like systemic racism. Right. Okay. And this was done. Okay. It started back when they were fucking murdering people out there, <laughs> murdering indigenous people out there in Little Bighorns in South Dakota, okay? Right. So, my take on it is I'm not just a person. I'm a female person. And even women today are still being held down and held back and shit. Yeah. So... They purposely wanted people of color for that's their term, okay? Uh-huh. Indigenous people POCs to be held down systemically, and it's been done historically throughout the United States for a very long time. Back yeah. to when they were doing that shit out there in South Dakota and to massacring whole tri- people. Right. Going into an a, a, a Indian reservation and actually massacring men, women, and children. And look it up. If you don't think I'm, if you think I'm just talking out of my ass, it's fine. But I'm not. So this happened here in this country. So what I'm saying is, this police brutality and government brutality against the people of this country. Be it, if, even if you're fucking white as a cast for the fucking golf, dude. Yep. They don't care anymore. They never did. <laughs> no, they didn't. They want, the government's wanted you to think it's about race, but it isn't. Right. It's about them controlling the people of this country, no matter what fucking color you are. And no matter, if you're, if you're female, you're going to make less money than a man. Okay? Right. And if you're a female that stays home and does the home, the housework and raises the kids, that, that job is looked down upon now. That's oh, sure. not a real job, people will say. Right. You know what? It is a job. It's a full-time job. Being a mother. Okay? So when I was a mom, single mom, I was working full time as a single mom, and I was well, when I started working, going back to work. I had twin boys. I went back to work part time when they were six months old, and then I, I went into full time short like six months later. So I was working two full time jobs. Yeah. One being a mom, two my my full time job. Yeah. But we're still looked down upon as that. We're still objectified sexually too. Sure. And I'm not a pussy. I'm not a wimp. So no pun intended. <laughs> um, but you know, it, 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 I've been on the I've been on that receiving end of that objectification. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's not. Yes, they still are historically free and slave. They've done studies and shit. Historic, and unless you're some CEO or something. Seriously. Men get promoted more. Men get raises more. It's proven, dude. Even yeah. today in this day and age. 
tell, prove me wrong, dude. Give me some link or some study that tells me that I'm wrong. Okay. Right. Well, I'm sure Not, they could you produce. Know, what? Go ahead. Uh, I'm sure they, he could produce one because people write all kinds of nonsense. Well, yeah. They, they, oh, here we have these statistics here for you to look at. You know. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's still it's true, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and you're a man. So you have no idea what I am talking about. Exactly. Because you're a man. I'm a woman. You don't know what I'm talking about. Because you've never been in my, my position. You, you're not a woman. You've never been a woman. Like the one time Matt said to me, well, why, why do you want the pepper spray when you go out, Mom? I'm like, you don't need that. I'm like, and Zach, me and Zach was here at the time, too. He's, Zach just looked at Matt like, what? <laughs> no, she needs that, dude. Yeah. Yep. And Matt's like, why? I'm like, Matt, you're not a woman. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh yeah. You're not a woman. And men don't think about that a lot. They'd rather <laughs> just say, oh, nice tits and nice ass. But yeah, baby. if your mom or your sister or your wife gets raped, then how would you feel? Exactly. Right? Yeah, oh yeah. So to sit there and be, you know... If you're going to be any kind of decent parent, if you have children, a daughter, how are you going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Are you going to objectify women then? Right, right. When you have a child that's a girl? You guys, you know what I mean? It, I'm all, I'm, it's all fun and games, and it's all it can be all in good fun, you know? Sure. Joking around about this, that, tits, ass, but hot. Oh yeah, she's hot. Oh yeah, blah, 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 you know. But you know what? It, it gets old sometimes after a while, and after a while, it's just like, you know, can we talk about shit that like matters? You know, would you look at your teenage daughter sexually? I mean, come on, Trump you guys. Does. You guys need. Oh yeah, Trump would. <laughs> yeah, there's pictures of him putting his hands right on his daughter's ass. It's gross. It is. Yeah. And it's when she's not even old, 18. Right. And no, I love boobs, dude. I have boobs. I, I love women. I love men, too. Well, I'm just saying, it's it's so easy for someone to, to criticize or to say, well, that's not what's going on. Or, oh, you just shouldn't feel that way. We're just joking around. Yeah. It's like, you know what? It, after a while, it's kind of like... Pfft, and I'm not saying women are perfect, dude. I, I know women can be manipulative. They can be this. They can be that. But even men can be that way, too. You know? Yeah. I'm not saying women are perfect because they're not. We're not. Humans aren't perfect. Right. You know? Um, so don't don't try to think of this as, like, something against men because I'm not. Man, I feel bad for men on a level because they've been taught to think of women that way. They've been taught to think a certain way. To oh, think with their other head and not their their real head. Yeah, the sexuality is in your they, face they all the time. They use that against you guys. Do you guys not see that? No, no, I'm, they, I said the sexuality, yeah. the sexuality is shoved in your face all the time. Yeah, and they that's a tool of theirs that they use. Yeah, you guys aren't immune from any of this. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? You right. they they use they use sexuality as a tool on all of us. Sure. You know. Sure. And it's it, it's not. I mean. I, it, sex is awesome, you know. Having somebody be fucking whatever, it's awesome. But they've made it like they've made it into something twisted, almost. You know what I'm saying? They've totally. made they they've used it to their advantage to like manipulate everybody. You yeah. know, it's well, like oh my god. I mean, it's just, you know tantalizing. Right, sex sells, right? Yep, yep, yep. So it's all about marketing and it's all about programming you. That's why, like, commercials get racier and racier since the dawn of TV, right? Sure. Like, the TV really has only been in uh. people's homes since, like, the 1950s, okay? Yeah. Which isn't that long ago. No, not at all. And, like, my parents remember well, when TV I, first came around. I, okay? I, guess, I guess, depending on how you look at it, because uh, 1950 was 70 years ago. 
<laughs> That's when TV started. Grim. I know, but that, I was just saying. So it depends on how you look at it. Not that long ago, seventy years is is a while. In the scheme of things, it's really not. Well, in, in the average human life, you know. So it, right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's one of their great has been one of their greatest tools. Like, let's just use like this example. Leave it to Beaver. Yeah. That show. Okay. That's what that that was portraying to everybody what you're supposed to be like. Oh yeah. All you're right. supposed to be perfect and prim and proper and you know it, it was just so like I mean even like the I Love Lucy show they didn't have a, a they had separate twin beds right right you know I mean <laughs> they were trying to be all like oh, all those old shows were like that yeah too. they were all like so I mean it was it's, if you go back and watch some of these shows, you guys like the, for younger people, you guys would be like, "Whoa!" <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it and then even like get to the seventies and you got like the Archie Bunker show, and r the differences in races was totally pointed out. You know, I, I don't think it was the, obvious Archie was white and a bigot. I don't, I don't think they ever. I don't think know? they. Uh, I don't think they ever showed the Archie Bunker bedroom. I they did. I, I uh, they, yeah, they did a couple times. Not very much, though. Right. But they did. Yeah, they did. I remember some episodes where they showed, like, uh, what's her face? Ethel? Is that her name? Who? Uh, Mrs. Bunker. Edith. 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 I knew it was an E. Edith. Yeah, they show their bedroom sometimes. Yeah. Not often, but they would. Oh, we, we got it. We got Elmer Fudd. Sure. Oh, yeah. But so, <laughs> I mean... Do you guys see how that's been used to program you and make you think a certain way? Yeah. You know, that's been one of their greatest tools. Hey, they, don't, they, they don't call it programming for nothing, people. Exactly. That's what they're doing. They're programming you. Exactly. They've been programming us. They were programming me when I was a little kid watching Walt, going to Walt Disney movies at the theater. Because yeah. there's, there's so much subliminal, subliminal shit they throw in there. Right. Disney Disney was involved in oh my you guys if you guys don't know you guys everyone thinks Disney's so great. Oh they made such good kids movies and they make people happy and they have Disney World and Disneyland and so awesome. It's such a front, you guys. You guys don't even realize it. Oh, like yeah. most people don't. Most people are like, What's wrong with Mickey Mouse and Walt Disney? Yeah, but they I... don't know the history. They don't know about Walt Disney. They don't know the Nazi propaganda films and shit that they made. They but, don't know about all the propaganda films that they made. They don't. They don't. They don't know the history. It, all, it comes down to that a lot of the time. Yeah, Disney. Was Knowing huge, history. D D Disney was a huge perv. Oh, big time! And yeah. you guys, I don't know. I, don't take my word for it. I'm not. I would take never. Take her word for it. Tell take, anybody. Take Moose Girl's word for it. No, don't. No, please do not. <laughs> do your own research, guys. You know, right. this is why I can't talk to most people, because they start just giving me this litany of shit. Oh, that's not true. Oh, you're crazy. Oh, blah, blah, They wouldn't do that. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, you guys are the ones, you, you're trying to, okay, when I look back and think about our conversation, I'm going to think to myself, this person's trying to argue with me historical documented fact. Yeah. How can you argue with somebody historical documented fact? I'm not just making this up. I wouldn't just talk talk like this if I didn't know what I was fucking talking about. Right. So. Yeah. Look it up. Look it's, it up. Unless, unless you just want to be one of them kinds of people, oh, they wouldn't do that and just go along your merry way. Your right. ignorant, merry way. Right. Okay, I'm going to read a blog here. Blog okay. post. This is posted on reallibertymedia.com. All right. It's called War Zone. All right. And some of y'all, some, some of y'all may be feeling like the author of this is feeling. Mm -hmm. a lot, several of you may be feeling this way. All right, War Zone. I can't keep up. I just can't. I'm exhausted trying to figure out what we're all supposed to do, believe, and be outraged by next. 
Two months ago, first responders were all the rage. In fact, they were heroes. Today we hate them, and we want them shot and defunded because they can't be trusted. Truckers were appreciated, and now they are blocked and pulled from their rigs and beat. Nurses and doctors are still cool, for now, unless, of course, they truly believe all lives matter. Then they're filled with hate and are part of the problem, like so many others. Just 45 days ago, protests were not essential and were considered criminal and murderous activity. Today, they're gloriously critical and celebrated. All the obvious criminal and murderous activities are simply ignored. If you protest about lockdowns for freedom, and you're, you're selfish and you'll spread the virus. If you protest loot and riot for social justice, you're a warrior and the virus seeds. Trust the experts. No, not those experts. Don't wear masks. Wear masks. Don't wear masks. Not sure. But if you don't hate people, you know, for three months, nothing was more important than social distance. In fact, we all get, we gave up all of our, our liberties for it. All of them. We canceled schools, medical procedures, activities, closed businesses, and wrecked the economy for it. Then came social justice, and social distance was no more. Now things are more cut and dry, though. Black Lives Matter. Okay, let's do it. Then multiple black police officers and individuals were killed during the peaceful protests. And I don't see any outrage. Black individually owned businesses were burned to the ground. Silence. Deadliest weekend in Chicago. Nothing. I'm really confused now. Look at the data. No, not that data. Do the math. No, you can't do the math like that. Just listen to the black community leaders. No, not them. If you're silent, you're part of the problem. If you speak, you're part of the problem. If you have to ask, you don't understand. If you don't ask, you don't care. It's also predictable, tedious, and exhausting. Nothing adds up. It's one gigantic common core life problem with ever-changing denominators and that I'm sure the media and politicians are eagerly ready to solve for us. Can't wait. Now, this is posted up here on Real Liberty Media by Vincent. But he puts a note here at the bottom, copied and pasted, thanks, Wendy. I don't know who Wendy is, but I think he, he borrowed that from somebody. So anyway, thanks for that, Vinny. Appreciate it. And um, if, you're, if you're not, uh, um, if you don't feel like somewhat to, to what this person feels like, I don't know, maybe you're sleeping. I, I don't know. But and that's the way it is. Everything was, then it was different. And now, whatever whatever they say, regardless of how opposite it happens to be, you're still supposed to listen to them. And it's crazy. It's insane. It's nuts. But that's just my take on it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't agree with everything in there, but... I, I know. And, and, she, and she's, you know, she doesn't agree either. She doesn't know what to say. She, she's confused. Or he... Uh, depending if it was Vinny that wrote it or there's Wendy that wrote it. I think yeah. I think somebody named Wendy wrote it. But, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, a little thing here mm -hmm. on the Free Thought Project by Matt Agarist. Neighbors shocked as cops attack and kidnap Amazon delivery man for parking wrong. Ugh. Now, this shouldn't come as a shock to anybody. They'll bust anybody for anything uh but but these idiots uh basically this guy amazon delivery driver uh, yeah that was well liked by all the residents in the area uh mm -hmm. 20, 23 year old delivery man um uh, parked on the wrong side of the road uh, to take his package up to somebody's door they do that all the time right they do it all the freaking time they do and, and 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 so the cop just happened to be there and yeah. came, came up and started harassing him about parking the wrong way and uh, oh giving, God, giving really? It's such a answers. crime. He's del obviously Amazon. Obviously, it's delivery. Obviously, he's not parked there for a long time. Yeah. 
So they tackled no. tackled the guy to the ground, handcuffed him, oh, and, hauled, and hauled him off over parking the wrong way. Now, this should be maybe a traffic ticket at the most. Right. At the most. A traffic ticket. You don't yeah. get tackled to the ground and handcuffed and hauled off to a cage somewhere for parking the wrong frickin' direction. Unbelievable. Amazon's not happy about this either. They're pissed. Good. And uh, and, and so Amazon's... Uh, Stop delivering them bastards! Well, he he wasn't delivering... <laughs> just kidding. He, he, he wasn't delivering... Anyway, Amazon sent another guy out so the truck wasn't just sitting there so people could steal all the shit. Uh, they they sent another driver out to pick up the truck. Um, uh, but but all, all the residents say, hey, what the hell, man? He didn't do anything wrong. Oh, right. And, and the cops, well, he parked the wrong way. Uh, oh, God. And, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, it's such a crime. Oh, my God. It's obviously he's going to be there for like a couple seconds. Okay. And he's, so when, yeah. when, when, when the cops went off and, and a bunch of other cops showed up, too. Not oh, my just, God. They always they, overplay this. Yeah. They bring six squads. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, so they left the car, the, the, the delivery truck parked there. Well, the guy's trying to do his job. They, they, they left the delivery delivery truck parked there, parked the wrong direction. They just left <laughs> oh, yeah. it there. They just yeah, left it that's there. That's great. That's just awesome. Yep, so, um, and, and initially the mayor of this town, what town was this in? Uh, Warren, Michigan. Shit okay. town. Warren, yeah. Michigan, it's a suburb of Detroit. There right. you go. So initially the, the mayor... Of the town said, oh, this is horrible, this is a terrible thing. And then he said, uh, and he came back a few, uh, just a little bit later and said, oh, he was just doing his job. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and and, and, and I, I, you would think it might have raised a little more outrage because um, he was a black guy. He was, I was going to say. He was, he was a black guy. Oh, oh, yeah. oh horrible. There horrible. You go. Racial profiling. Horrible thing. Because war in Michigan, like a lot of white people live there, but it's a summer of Detroit, so. All right, we're going to do some more music here. Um, <laughs> pay attention to this uh, first track, the words in this first track. This is a public service announcement. All right. By The Clash. <laughs> awesome. This is a public service announcement. I like guns. We're in there. Oh, hell, here I am talking away, and I got I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, like, hello? <laughs> uh, oh, I wish you'd have said something sooner. Oh, boy. I forget uh, I, I forget everything I even said, and I guess it doesn't matter now. Uh, uh, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it happens. I've done every mistake you could possibly do, and I'm sure there's more to do. So yeah, I'm yeah. sure I'll do them. Yeah, I said you were talking about how I like goods and all that stuff, and how hopefully everybody listened to that uh, uh, Clash song. You know, you know your rights because uh, without right. saying, you know, uh, murder murder is a crime unless it's done by a yes. cop. Unless it's done by a cop, uh, and and you, you got the freedom of speech unless you try to actually use it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Good luck using it. Yeah. Without getting the beat down. Yeah. Or the, right, the killing, the killing of yourself. I know. Of, I, of I your know. your it, your it, person. It's it's messed Which, up. They got no problem doing that. Yeah. No, they, they, you know. they they do not. 
Um, so yeah, you know, I just I'm done. I'm sick of it. I'm 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 done with the police brutality bullshit and the militarized police and the government in general and just all of it. Like fuck off. Seriously, fuck yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. Fuck off. Fuck off. Fuck off. Telling me what I'm supposed to do and think and eat and get injected. You're gonna inject me with poisons? Uh, no, thank you. No, uh, no, not no. No, uh, no, thank you. No way in hell. Right, <laughs> motherfucker. All right. Um, okay. One, one quick little story before I, we gotta do the last okay. thing here. Sounds good. All right. We got a lot of guys in here. Older guys in here. Uh, have any? Have any of you? Been losing your hair? Are any of you balding? <laughs> <laughs> bald men. You're not, bald, though, Graham. I am good. certainly not. No. You're uh, good. Uh, bald men may be hit harder by <laughs> coronavirus. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. Yeah. It says, uh -huh. it, says, it, says here, it says here bald men appear to be at higher risk of suffering severe coronavirus symptoms. A risk factor being named. After the Big Apple uh, man, who was the first U.S. doctor to die of the contagion. Oh yeah, because he was bald. He was more at risk. We, we really think that baldness is a perfect predictor of severity. Professor Carlos Wambler of Brown University told the Telegraph. Oh God, can you believe this crap? The 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 link emerged during studies trying to show why men suffer worse from Corona than women. It's uh, because they want. They want all the cops in the military to be, like, close shaven, but they want the rest of us to look like motherfucking Grizzly Adams, dude. Sorry, bald-headed motherfuckers. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, sci scientists now believe that androgens, male sex hormones like testosterone, may boost the ability of the coronavirus to attack cells. Bullshit! Bullshit! <laughs> The, the same why? Because why? Because they're bald. The same androgens are also <laughs> understood to be behind baldness. So if you if you're uh, pumped up with androgens, then then you're oh, probably yeah. androgen. What is that? Is that like estrogen? Except it's only a male. Oh well, yeah, that's what they said. That's what they said. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, said it's you know. Uh, it... Okay, but women are immune then apparently. Well, unless you're going estrogen, bald. Estrogen is like... Women can go bald, too. Yeah, they can if they have alopecia. Well, whatever. <laughs> or they have breast cancer. They went through chemotherapy or whatever. Radiation. All right, we got to do this last set here. So, uh... Okay. All right. <laughs> Crazy crap. Yeah, oh, my you, God. Baldies. <laughs> Seriously, you guys... Yeah, this yeah. is crazy. Uh, yeah. This is a band called Rumahoy. Who are... Uh, never mind. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. 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 Hua, Black Belly. <laughs> Christopher Alvaroso there covering Black Betty. Uh, we kicked it off there with Rumahoy. Cowboys of the Sea. Not Cowboy Tex of the Sea, but probably Cowboy Tech of the Sea would work just as well. <laughs> oh, I love that version of Black Betty, man. Oh, it's great. Anyway, anyway, uh, thanks to everyone, all you out there tuned in to the Freakers Ball. We'll be back next Friday with another edition uh, of uh, the Black Betty, I mean the Black Betty Show. Yeah, the Freakers Ball Show. <laughs> <laughs> the Black Betty Freakers Ball Show. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Tomorrow you get the dark table at 2 p.m. Eastern time with Flash and probably with Grammy as well. Could be other people out there. Uh, who knows? Who knows? So uh, thank you all. Um, even you, Hansel, thank you too. Um, <laughs> uh, Y'all have a great weekend, a great week. Check uh, the schedule on reallibertymedia.com uh, for all the shows coming up on RLM yeah, Radio man. throughout the week. And uh, you'll, you'll be glad you did, won't you? Ho yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, you will. You will. All right. <laughs> Are you anything else? Uh, no, not really. No. All right. Peace. Peace. <laughs>